Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm the king and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to revisit one of our older concepts that we've done a few times back in 2019. And that concept is the most requested characters to come on into Dead by Daylight. We've made videos and speculations talking about a bunch of different crazy theories this year. And as the year is coming to an end, I want to just talk about some of those ideas as well as mixing in some new ideas of what we can expect to come on into Dead by Daylight towards the future. We know that in the fourth year where we see something absolutely massive from Konami being Pyramid Head and Cheryl Mason, so when it comes down to fifth year we might be seeing something similar at that great aspect maybe it can be anything you know you can pretty much make a theory for anything coming on into the game and i think dvd is going to be putting together something really huge for us and i thought we can take this opportunity to go ahead and look at that before we jump on into this a few quick things number one we are live on twitch right now link is down below if you guys want to come and talk to us or watch Number two, we're 100 subscribers off 100,000. Absolutely insane. Please consider subscribing down below. And Oryxel giveaway, for those of you guys that are curious about it, has been extended as well as amplified, meaning more winners, more prizes, bigger prizes. Link down below. With that being said, everybody, let's go ahead and talk about some of the cool concepts and with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these cool concepts. A link in the description to all of the actual creators. As you can see here on screen, what we have is the Walking Dead coming on into DBD. That would be absolutely mind blowing and just crazy. Uh, and what we have here is the new survivor, Rick Grimes. We have the new killer, the undead, the new map, West Georgia, correctional facility with the Glenn's pocket watch and down below we have the days gone by brothers in arms and JSS so pretty cool stuff to say the least let's go ahead and read these perks again these are all fan made none by me a link in the description to the creators as well and, and also keep in mind that these things may not be optimized or balanced or just fan creations so take everything with a grain of salt let's go ahead and read some of these things the first one we have is days gone by and it says you have a history of waking up in unfamiliar places once the exit gates are powered their auras are revealed to you within a range of 64 76 and 128 meters it says opening one exit gate grants the endurance status effect for 10 15 and 20 seconds interesting concept on the perk the next one we have is brothers in arms you're always looking out for your family once per trial taking a protection hit from an injured survivor breaks them into a sprint at 150 percent their normal running speed and hides their scratch marks for three seconds causes the exhausted status effect for 60 50 and 40 seconds very very interesting perk i actually really like that concept of brothers of arm uh, pretty interesting perk to say the least, and I can definitely see that coming on into the game eventually with some tweaks. The final perk on the list is JSS, and it says, All the carnage you've seen has only made you stronger. You muster all your strength to survive. As the last survivor, if the killer attempts to kill you by their own hand, succeed a skill check to escape the killer's grasp and stun them for 4, 5, or 6 seconds. This is an interesting perk, so basically if the killer is trying to moor you, you can escape it. Obviously, this is going to be a little bit different with mori changes and being that if you're only the last survivor, because normally you don't really make it that far, and it would be a waste of a perk to run it because it's so conditional as well, but with some fine tweaks, this could also become a pretty decent perk that we could see coming on into the game so all in all this chapter is pretty well received and pretty well done so shout out to 18 miles out they did a really good job on this one let's go ahead and take a look at the next one the next one on the list of course is the candy man the candy man for those of you guys that don't know has been speculated for so long to be coming on into the game and a lot of people said that because of the whole COVID situation and the movie being delayed this chapter was delayed. This was a big theory and speculation that was going around and it still can potentially be true. So we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening with that. But this is a killer concept. 
for the Candyman coming on into the game. For the power, we have the Urban Legend. It says seven mirrors will spawn around the map at the start of the game. One of them will always be in the basement. Candyman uses them to obs as observation tools to see the location of the survivors and as portals to travel around the map. Pressing the power button will teleport Candyman to the mirror world, where he will have the point of view of the mirrors around the map. He can switch from mirror to mirror to watch different parts of the map, then he can teleport back to the map using the mirror he chooses. When Candyman is inside the mirror world, he's undetectable. Urban Legend has a cooldown of 20 seconds. Survivors can destroy the mirrors performing an animation that'll take them 10 seconds. Broken mirrors can't be used by Candyman, they'll regenerate it automatically after 50 seconds. And here is his special ability, Swarm of Bees. The Candyman can stalk survivors when he's inside the mirror world. Stalking survivors will slowly charge up swarm of bees. When the ability is at 100% charge and if Candyman is outside the mirror world, he can press the active ability button to liberate an enormous swarm of bees in a 15 meter radius. Any survivor in a swarm of bees will be affected by the deep wound status effect and their auras will be revealed to the Candyman. The swarm of bees will last for 40 seconds. So interesting concept with the mirrors, I really like that, as well as the swarm of bees giving a little extra power to him. So not only does he have the ability to travel around the world and survivors have the ability to have counterplay to this, but if you are too close or if you're trying to break something, he has the ability to stop you. Let's take a look at some of his perks. We have three of them. The first one is Innocent Blood. You can kick gens and destroy pallets while carrying a survivor. Every pallet or gem that you kick while carrying a survivor reduces 20, 25, or 30% of the survivor's wiggle progress. I really like that perk. I think that could work very good in DVD. Let's take a look at the next one. Rumor. Damaging a generator causes the gen to emit a terror radius of 15, 20, and 25 meters that all survivors will hear for 20 seconds. Rumor can be triggered once every 40 seconds. So interesting. Damaging a gen will go ahead and emit a terror radio, so it will scare the survivors away from that generator so they won't go back to work on it. Very interesting perk. The next one is Hex Be My Victim. The speed boost that survivors get after hit for the hit by the killer, putting them into the injured state, is reduced by 100%. The movement speed of anybody in the dying state is reduced by 30%. This Hex activates 5, 4, and 3 gens are completed. Very interesting perk. A very, very interesting perk indeed. I can see a little bit of abuse would say the best for last, but an interesting concept. Well done to the creator of the Candyman Urban Legend chapter. Very, very good. I love the perks. I love the concept, and I think this could definitely work on in the game. The next concept we have on the list is the alien. Now, the alien was something that was rumored to come on out. We've seen some fake screenshots in the last chapter when Pyramid Head was coming on out. And a lot of people were like, Ooh, is this real? Is this not? Soon to be debunked. And obviously, it didn't come on out. So we're going to read about this. I'm trying to make it small enough so everybody could see it, but I can't see it myself. So I am going to have to block out some of it and read it. We have the alien from Dead by Daylight, uh, or not from Dead by Daylight, to be in Dead by Daylight. Uh, and so, let's read about it. It says, genetically modified to be the perfect killing machine. Your natural talent for hunting down and abducting your prey grants you a number of deathly traits. Use the second power interaction to leap forward with a tail rush, greatly extending your attack range at the cost of increased recovery animation. So this is similar to the Demogorgon. The alien's acidic blood prevents a very real danger to survivors during the chase. The directly stunned with a pallet acid blood is splashed on the pallet itself. Vaulting over an acidic pallet injures the survivors. This damage will never drop a survivor into the dying state. Overmorphs can spawn on each stage. When approached by survivor, these eggs will slowly open before rapidly launching a face hugger on its target. Facehuggers can attack survivors in the dying state. Facehug survivors will be instantly knocked down for 5 seconds and will begin to receive status effects over time. These will be repair speed decrease, healing speed decrease, and survivors begins to cough, 
survivor suffers from bleeding and hindered. A chest burster erupts from the survivor's chest and they are instantly sacrificed. So similar to the pig's countdown, very interesting stuff. Let's go ahead and read about some of these perks. The first one we have is Illusions of Morality. After landing a successful attack while carrying your survivor, all survivors are exposed for 6, 8, and 15 seconds. That would be interesting to see with the perk that we had in the previous one where if you hit a survivor, their wiggle goes down. The next one is Structural Perfection. Wounds inflicted by successful attacks hinder your target and increase their volume of injured cries of pain. So very similar to Strider as well. Basically, if you injure them, it's like a sloppy butcher kind of uh, add-on or a perk combined with a Strider. And the final one is Purity. While carrying a survivor, you are able to slightly, moderately, and considerably move survivors out your way when walking into them. That is interesting, just pushing them away. Very interesting concept to say the least, and I think the alien, if it were to come on into the game, the power would be pretty spot on, and we would be seeing something like that coming on in. Well done to this chapter. Now, I do have some more chapters to go. I have a bunch, actually, but I realized that this video is getting a little bit long, so we're going to wrap it up with the final killer concept that we have for today, and that one is the Brute or Jason. The map will be Crystal Lake, Forest Green, and the Lazarus Crystal Lake. The add-ons are to the right, and the Mori is there as well. The Brute picks up the survivor and stabs him repeatedly in the stomach. He then breaks the victim's back by slamming them down over his knee. And it says the power is Relentless Pursuit. Forced to witness your mother's murder, the entity has turned your desire for vengeance into a dark calling that makes you nearly impossible to lose in the chase. The brute can summon and travel through the fog in order to quickly catch and destroy his victims. Hold the secondary power button to summon Lick Mace, Lake Mist, drastically increasing the fog in the surrounding area and slowing the brute while the button is held. Releasing the button to teleport through the mist, instantly propelling yourself forward and striking in the opposite direction. Holding the secondary power button without releasing it maintains the mist in a 16 meter radius around the brute. Interesting concept. Using the fog as your own means of traveling and killing the survivors, I really like that concept. So, what we have here for the first perk is Kill for Mother. At the beginning of the match, survivors' auras are revealed to you for, I can't actually see that because it's so small, for two seconds, receive a 22% bonus in all brutality blood point gains. At least that's what I think it says. It's so small because the purple and the black, or actually it says X. It doesn't say two at all. I'm just blind. It says X. Hex Death Curse. Upon hooking a survivor, your next attack within X seconds instantly inflicts the dying state. The hex status persists as long as the related hex totem is standing. I really like that perk. I think that would be really awesome. The final chapter. When the last generator is completed, the exit gates are unpowered for a total of XX seconds, receive a XX movement speed bonus. This would be a pretty good alternative to Noed. I think that would be a really cool concept. Maybe one day towards the future we'll be getting something like that. But ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, talking about all of the cool killer perks and killers and maps and mores that can come on into the game. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below. Fanmade chapters, my friends, are going to be making their return very, very soon. We're going to be talking about fanmade chapters made by you guys. If you want more information on that, join our Discord server, and that's where we're going to be picking the chapters to be featured in the videos. Make sure you guys leave a like if you did enjoy down below. What was your favorite chapter? Let me know as well. If you think any of these concepts could work in DVD, make sure you come out to Twitch as well and subscribe down below for some more DVD content. And as always, I tip my crown to you guys, and we'll see you in the fall. <laughs>